All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, many of you have been watching with horror as Texas residents froze in their dark homes after a winter storm triggered a catastrophic power failure that left millions without electricity in freezing cold temperatures. The stories that have come out of that state are absolutely heartbreaking. One little 11-year-old boy went to sleep in his unheated trailer next to his brother, never woke up the next day. The family and local authorities suspect that he succumbed to hypothermia. The temperature had dropped to just nine degrees. A 75-year-old man died in his truck after his oxygen machine stopped working, ran out of supplementary tanks. A mother and her seven-year-old daughter died of carbon monoxide poisoning after running a vehicle in the garage to try to get warm. Many who survived the storm are now faced with another menace, massive energy bills running into the tens of thousands of dollars. Customers of a company called Gritty came in for the most brutal exploitation. So the company's whole model is to sell consumers electricity at wholesale prices. That means when demand is low and energy is cheap, you get a good deal. But as it turns out, that also means when demand surges and production drops, you can quickly get hit with a multi thousand dollar bill before you can say the words price gouging. New York Times interviewed veteran Scott Willoughby. He lives off of Social Security. He got a sixteen thousand dollar electric bill. Here's what he told the Times, quote, my savings is gone. There's nothing I can do about it, but it's broken me. The article goes on to interview more Texans who are being hit with sudden massive energy bills that have completely drained their savings accounts. But perhaps the most shocking thing about it was the absolute callous disregard of the market fundamentalist William Hogan, who's credited with designing this free market paradise that is the Texas energy market. In an interview with The Times, Mr. Hogan argued that the market actually worked perfectly here. The rapid losses of power, more than a third of the state's available electricity production was offline at one point, increased the risk that the entire system would collapse, causing prices to rise, said Mr. Hogan, a professor of global energy policy at Harvard's Kennedy School. Quote, as you get closer and closer to the bare minimum, these prices get higher and higher, which is what you want. Now, what kind of a sick ideology do you have to have to argue that destroying the lives of people like Mr. Willoughby, draining every penny from their saving accounts, is what you want? The answer, of course, is exactly the kind of sick ideology that has dominated this country for the past 40 years. Texas's experiment with aggressively deregulating their energy sector is just one dramatic example of the kind of blind market magical thinking and abandonment of any value except for profit maximization that has hollowed out the entire nation. How did we get to this place? Well, just like with Gritty, the core of the pitch made to average consumers is always the lure of low prices with no detailing of the steep costs that are associated with those low prices. They dangle cheap goods and convince you to trade away every other value and priority. So just think about Walmart or Amazon as an example. These mega monopolistic retailers have gutted the country. They've destroyed countless small businesses. They turned main streets into abandoned husks and they are now waging war even on the suburban landscape. What's more, they suck all of the wealth out of local communities to Bentonville, Arkansas, or Seattle, Washington, providing in exchange only some poorly paid, non-unionized, exploitative jobs and the irresistible attraction of low, low prices so that we can all live the American consumerist dream. Are you actually better off when your town is gutted but you can buy more cheap plastic crap at rock bottom prices? Or think about the minimum wage debate. Market fundamentalists always fear monger about how expensive the Big Macs are going to be if we dare lift the minimum wage above poverty levels. It's a clever way to try to make a populist pitch for what is fundamentally a plutocrat's agenda. Left unstated, of course, is the fact that lifting wages will give you more money in your pocket to afford that extra 17 cents for your Big Mac, or perhaps to afford you with better food buying options than the fast food wasteland. Or consider the debate around taxes. Low taxes are great. Till it comes time to build roads, fund schools, and oh, I don't know, maybe winterize your electric grid. Gritty got customers signed up with that promise of cheap energy, but they failed to warn adequately about the potential devastating downsides. And for a desperately cash-strapped nation, the chance at cheaper prices holds huge appeal, especially because the payoff of the cheap good is immediate, while the horrific costs don't show up until the medium or long term. So step by step, Americans have been persuaded to accept the plutocrats' free market radicalism. Step one, 
was to frame the American dream in terms of consumerism, having the material goods associated with the middle class life. Step two was to strip the social safety net and scrap pensions and steady employment arrangements in favor of contract work and the gig economy so that middle class life was increasingly unattainable. Step three was to dangle the ability to fake the middle class life through credit cards and cheap crap. Hey, if we bust the unions and keep wages low and deregulate so that the FDA will look the other way while literal poison makes it into baby food, as we covered here before, maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to scrape together the appearance of affluence on a credit card charging 24% APR. Always left out of the pitch by the politicians, paid by the bankers and corporate interests to sing this siren song is the unacceptably high cost of these low prices. And then what is the last step in the sequence? When, like in Texas this past week, the devastating effect of this market fundamentalism comes plainly into view. Well, step four is to blame frozen windmills or the Green New Deal or socialism to maybe head to Cancun and then hope that political tribalism keeps any sort of real reckoning or course correction from ever occurring. And Sagar, very interesting going back to the roots of this Texas crisis, Mm -hmm. by the way. Guess who was governor when they put into place this like free market deregulation impact? Who was? Ann Richards? W. Oh, oh W? Okay. W. Oh, there <laughs> Roots yeah. of all things Actually, evil. Go back should, to George W. Bush. I should know that from my Enron, <laughs> my Enron book. This was a big thing that Enron wanted. Why? Because right. they were already gaming California and they wanted to game Texas right. too. And so I, it was funny as I really thought about this gritty situation yeah. though. And I realized that this lure that they dangle of cheap prices, which are immediate, which you can feel right away in your budget. You say, okay, it's going to cost less for electricity. It's going to cost less for goods. It's going to cost less for baby food, whatever it is. That has been used to draw people in and never, ever do they lay out the consequences and the destruction Mm -hmm. that those low, low prices are wreaking across our economy. We're going to talk to Chris Smalls today at Amazon. I mean, they're a classic example of this. They just are horrific to their labor force in service of low prices, getting the delivery to you, and it's destroying local retail. It's destroying the suburban landscape at this point. It's sucking all the wealth locally out of the towns. And that part has a longer-term effect, so it's harder for people to see and visualize in that moment. No, and what I kept thinking about was uh, what literally crashed our economy in 2008, subprime mortgages. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing, right? Predatory lending. That's exactly what this entire thing is. Oh, you can own a home. You can own a huge home. You can own three homes, four homes. Um, And yeah, you don't even have to put any money down. People are like, what? Of course they're going to take that deal. Yeah. But re- they don't read the fine print, which says, oh, but they can jack the rates up and you can basically lose all four at a single time. And all, all this is going to be commoditized, etc. Everybody knows the story. Payday lending is very much the same situation. They're like, yeah, you get your money right now, mm-hmm. right? Oh, but left unsaid is we're going to gouge you for the rest of your life. Po- I mean – so much of our economy is built upon leaching out um, all these things. And like you said, we're just promising people dreams and, and other things in exchange for deals which look good, but which can have immense consequence. And yeah, look, my conservative friends love to talk about deregulation. I think in some cases, deregulation is great. Uh, one of the fascinating things about Houston, though, has always been it's been this very strange experiment in this, which is they have no zoning laws. In some ways, it's good. Housing is cheap. In other ways, it's a weird city where you can have like a warehouse next to a house, which is next to like a luxury condo. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? So look, there's a balance towards all of this. And when you are ideologically committed towards one thing all the way in one direction, then you end up in situations like this. And people should be much more humble about what it means, which is, look, I read the documents. The Texas uh, Texas leadership was warned twice about possible once in 100 year storms with the cold snap and what it could do. And all they had to do was winterize their natural gas equipment, which would have cost X millions of dollars, and none of us would have been in this situation. Yeah. It's not a politically convenient narrative to anyone, right? Because right? it still requires fossil fuels, but it also requires like hardening your energy grid. Nobody wants to do it. And I think that's the, actually the bigger problem we have. Well, and the thing yeah. that was incredible in that New York Times article that was talking about these outrageous energy bills that yeah. these customers were getting, like Mr. Willoughby, Willoughby, the veteran who lives on Social Security, and got a $16,000 electric bill. Um, the quote from the dude who is credited with, credited with setting up this Texas 
energy free mm-hmm. market experiment. And he's just like, yeah, this worked just the way it's supposed to. Right. Like yeah. they actually like they're fine with this because eh, well, I see okay around the margins. Well, for people years, like this didn't get hurt. Anything. So now it's working. Right now this is this is the way it's supposed to work. Right. And so this is all fine and good. And that just really exposes just yeah. how radical that ideology is. And look, we saw it here. NAFTA is another perfect example where people like that guy who have that free market fundamentalist view, they look at it and they say, well, overall, mm-hmm. GDP may have increased by a tick. And so this was a this was an appropriate experiment. This worked out perfectly. This worked out exactly as we're expected. Now go and talk to the people who live in the towns that have been absolutely decimated, have seen their livelihoods go away, who've never been able to re-achieve their middle class stability, and ask them how it goes for them. But when you're just looking at these sort of like impersonal macroeconomic variables and you don't actually give a shit about the individual human beings and the yeah. way that they're going to suffer, you end up with these horrific outcomes. That's basically what we see in Texas right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And you saw like Ted Cruz be like, this is wrong. I'm like, yeah, how'd it get this way, man? Yeah. yeah. Go let's ask talk Phil about Graham. That. Yeah. Indeed. Right. Next on Rising, Roger Fisk, Rachel Bovard. They're here for Team Rising when Rising returns. 